Good Monday afternoon, everybody. It's David Schlotthauer here in the Home Weather Office with another detailed U.S. weather forecast for November 27th, 2023. In today's update, we're going to break down the heavy lake effect snow that is going on right now across the Great Lakes with more active weather coming over the next 10 days for much of the U.S. with big storms for the Pacific Northwest. Now, if you're new to the channel, please consider slapping that subscribe button today to get latest updates on the channel, including hitting the like button if you're also enjoying the content. And not only that, never forget to also share this video with their family and friends on social media. So tracking that lake effect snow really quickly right now over Buffalo, New York. If you're in Belvia, if you are in, say, Rochester, yeah, you're getting some intense lake effect snow in fact so intense there's even a lightning strike signature showing up here just south southwest of Blastdale. if you're in apple springs yeah you're getting some very intense snowfall rates here of over six inches an hour and this is going to accumulate even more because we got that cold arctic air in place and you can really take note of that all of this blue is going to be headed towards an east northeast towards buffalo and so there will be times where you get some formidable snowfall uh, rates versus not seeing anything at all but there could also be times where you do see some lightning strikes with some of this convective snow shower activity we're also seeing some lake effect snow taking place over grand rapids in michigan if you are in reed city if you are in big rapids yeah you're getting some hit and miss snow showers moving across the region if you're in fremont in michigan lakeview yeah you're getting a little bit of snowfall there too not only that if you're in duluth in minnesota you're getting some convective type snowfall fall showers moving from northwest to southeast so if you're getting impacted by one of these snowfall bands you might get a reduced visibility might see some sluggish conditions on the roadways so keep that in mind if you're doing anything for the rest of the day with those cold temperatures right now it's 12 degrees in Duluth right now if you're in two harbor 16 degrees if you're in Hibbing 10 degrees so we could understand why there is some convective snow showers going on right now across Minnesota and northern wisconsin here's a zoomed out view of the very active weather that is breaking out across the northeast you can see that large circulation that is the cold arctic air that is in place moving across lake michigan if you're in lake huron if you're in lake erie lake ontario yep that's triggering the lake effect snow because the cold air aloft is mixing down to the surface with those warm lake waters you get convection and convection in this case with colder temperatures means heavy heavy lake effect snow and that's going to continue for the next day or so as this circulation kind of kind of hangs out here for a little while but there are big weather pattern changes coming that you all need to be aware of and we're talking a big massive warm-up for early December. Before we get chit-chatting about those temperature anomalies and the big warm-up coming, it's a good idea that we actually look at what big storm is coming because there is more behind this monster that is moving into northeastern Canada. So let's take a look here at the GFS model. This is for tomorrow morning. Of course, lake effect snow in full swing. Look at the blue on your screen. So yes, it's not going to end anytime soon. Look at this for Buffalo. I actually meant to say Watertown. Yeah, it's going to be coming down pretty hard there. In fact, so hard, we could see um, blizzard warnings issued eventually and potentially more thunder snow included with that. Not only that, look at this over Michigan, more lake effect snow coming. In fact, when we take a look at the HRRR snowfall totals, which is a high resolution rapid refresh model, it really paints a picture of how much additional snowfall is coming through Wednesday morning, November the 29th, 2023. This is two days out, and we're talking more than a couple of feet in some of the heaviest snowfall prone areas with some orographic effects on top of more lake effect. It's really going to come in big bands, folks. Look at this. Right south of Buffalo, you might get as much as two to four feet of snowfall, additionally speaking. 
And then over here, uh, actually, that's not Buffalo. This is not Buffalo. This is Watertown. Buffalo's over here. Sorry, folks. I get my Great Lakes mixed up in locations, but I did correct myself in this video. Uh, anyways, you can see here uh, quite a bit. That's all you need to know. There's going to be a lot of snowfall in the next couple of days, leading to a lot of travel problems, maybe some flight cancellations. If you're kind of extending your Thanksgiving vacation, this could be really, really bad for a lot of you uh, folks living here in the upstate region with a lot of lake effect snow. Not only that, Michigan is also going to see their fair share of um, intense lake effect snow too, as you all can see here across the northern portion there of the Mitten State or the Glove State, I should say. Kind of look, looks like a glove to my eyes, maybe to you too. You can see anywhere between 6 to 12 inches of additional snowfall coming. So, yeah, just because really the system's not really that big. Indeed, not a lot of impacts other than the colder air. Well, in isolated areas that are prone to lake effect snow, it is going to be full swing ahead. So back to the GFS we go. There's Lake Effect Snow Machine going to continue all the way through Wednesday like we talked about, but the pattern is going to change. As you all can see, warm air advection going to lift that colder air out uh, into the Can Canadian border where that blue is on your screen. That's the snow. And then this is going to be followed by a pretty impressive system. All right, that's going to rapidly develop in the deep south. This is usually coincidental with El Nino events, all right? We get a lot of storms, low-latitude cyclones that kind of undercut the high to the north, and we get a lot of nasty stuff going. So you can see lots of heavy rainfall, strong winds, potentially over Arkansas, Louisiana. You desperately need the rain, and it's coming in 90 hours from now. Actually, probably even sooner than that, potentially in the next three days, you're going to see some big changes coming, and then that system moves out quickly because the jet stream is strong but pay attention to the pacific northwest things are going to get very very dicey the first in a series of atmospheric rivers will slam northern california oregon and washington in days to come this is friday night december the 2nd the first couple of days could be really rough across the west depending on again where you're actually located we got low elevation snow for the, um, if you're in the Cascades, could be pretty dicey. We got some strong winds to talk about. Then that system moves out, right? And then it moves in to, uh, kind of jumps the gun into the deep south. But there's another atmospheric river for Oregon, for Washington, for Northern California. And then it just continues. Look at this. It just rains and rains and does not stop at all. Uh, and of course, this is far out on the GFS. This is fantasy land. Well, sort of and sort of not. There is some agreement that there is going to be a lot of rainfall uh, up across the Pacific Northwest here, as you all can see. It's been trending further north lately. No rain for California. We wish we can get some here. Nice good northeast or potentially another one of those big balmy systems potentially uh, on day 5 of December, that is Tuesday, 198 hours out. That's what the model indicates. And then kind of things do quiet down a little bit. But then when things do, we get more lake effect snow potentially here. Wants to show up on the models here of the GFS. But of course, this is far out. This is the ninth day of December. We cannot kind of use our binoculars and look that far out. Instead, we just kind of have to look at the model trends because there's been some really wild outcomes of some very cold air or not so much of that. Rainfall totals look phenomenal, especially in Oregon and Washington, where you might see as much as a foot or more of rainfall, especially where orographic effects are strongest. Again, that's when you got wind or, or really warm, well, not really warm, but mild, moist air, Pacific air that goes up and over these mountains. It squeezes out in the form of pretty intense precipitation, and that's what we got. And so right along the coastal ranges there, the Cascades, you can get feet of rainfall potentially through the next 10 days, whereas California it's going to be very hard to get any storms into Sacramento, Bakersfield. You might not see any rainfall in the next 10 days. The Deep South going to get your fair share of moisture. Anywhere between 2 to 4 inches of rain is anticipated through the next 10 days, including for the Northeast here. Going to get some more active weather, but wow. Kind of the dry hole over here in the Deep South, or, or 
kind of the extreme southwest, including for the high plains. Really not going to see much in the way of any measurable snow or rainfall in the next 10 days. Boy, we really need it bad. Now, what about those temperature anomalies? We talked about at the beginning of the video how we're going to see a big, massive uh, warm-up. I'm not calling this a heat wave, and if you guys want to be more ex exaggerated about that, we can call this a heat wave. This is going to be coming in early December because we got a negative uh, NAO, okay, and we got a really weak Arctic oscillation, and so we're going to get some big extremes here uh, in some sense, and that's going to really unveil a lot of these warm anomalous temperatures. So in the next 66 hours... The cold air, air moves out, and then we get a little bit of another push of Arctic air, really not much in the next five days, right? We start seeing the warm-up here. Look at this, folks. A lot of orange and red here, and it gets more extreme. Look at this. Ten days out. Mighty, mighty goodness. Lots of warmer than average temperatures. Probably some uh, all-time records for early December standards here for the northern plains, for the high plains, for the central region of the U.S. could see some very, very mild, even warm temperatures for early December. And this could continue. If, we, if I want to bring this all the way out, I can because I'll tell you, <laughs> it's not coming. You're not going to see much in the way of Arctic air masses. Look at the last run from last night. 06Z was really, really ballistic and over-exaggerating it. So we have some wild outcomes. But the whole trend here is the Arctic air masses are going to shut off and you're going to say a good kiss goodbye to those because when we get more ridging in the midwest like this we get a lot of warmer air that piles up and you're not going to see much of a winter wonderland for early december what about those actual air temperatures yeah we talked about how cold it is up here in the northern u.s triggering that lake effect snow and a lot of problems with you know with plants getting damaged um outdoor livestock being affected because of how cold these temperatures are remember this is not supposed to happen this is late november i mean yes once in a while we do but i mean come on just think about this folks we're in late november and we're seeing temperatures that we don't typically see until late december so, I mean, it's it's really extreme to seeing this happen in such a way that even Tuesday morning, some areas could get as cold as 2 degrees at night in, like, Iowa, Wisconsin, northern Illinois, Minnesota. So, yeah, make sure you do take the precautions to protect your plants. Bring those inside. Bring the dogs. Bring the cats inside. The livestock inside. And make sure your crops are not going to be affected by keeping them covered. Because, yeah, we could see a lot of crop damage being affected here by this colder air that's in place. But that's going to move away as we go into day three. Day four, you can see the pattern changing here. Eventually, you're going to enjoy 40s. And then eventually might even eclipse some 50s up there in Iowa. I mean, come on. You're you're going from the teens. 10 days later, you might see temperatures in the 50s and 60s. How about that? You're going to see some 70s potentially over, say, Oklahoma and Texas. Might even see some upper 70s there for the deep south. So definitely some milder temperatures are on the way. Saving grace. The colder air is going to be out of here. It's kind of like, you know, when someone hits a home run and how they say, it is out of here, you know, kind of thing. So the cold air out and you're going to warm up nicely. We'll see. Is this going to be El Nino like? That's going to be the thing that we're all wondering about. Typical with El Nino is it is more milder up there. And so I think things are starting to click into place here as far as our weather pattern change goes. Goodbye cold air, welcome the warm air. Now looking at our 250 millibar jet stream pattern or upper wind chart, you can see why we're seeing such extreme temperatures is because of this trough that is hugging the Great Lakes. South of that, you got a very strong jet stream here racing at over 200 miles an hour. So that's very strong because the temperature gradient is strongest, right? I learned this from Ethan B. 
the stronger the jet stream, the tighter the temperature and thermal gradient is going to be from the north to the south. South of the jet, you get more subtropical air, so it's warmer than average. And then to the north of the jet stream, it's actually cooler than average. And that's what we got. Mighty trough here. The polar vortex kind of taking a nosedive dip into the northeast. And that's really going to exacerbate the jet stream. But don't worry, the pattern is changing. Look at the flow here. What is this? Southwesterly flow. What does southwesterly flow like to do? It likes to bring in more warmer advection. The warmer air coming in out of the south because of that flow. And you get cooler air over the west. And that's kind of what's fitting here with the forecast. Cooler west, warmer east. And you can see where the trough is. So kind of a notable pattern change. And then eventually things might want to switch again out to day seven and day eight with another speed max here could trigger more big storms. And that's why on the GFS, we showed you that uh, with the precipitation, we got this storm that is going to really get going and it could explode in size. Look at that 967, all thanks to that jet stream uh, pattern that is in place. That's a very strong jet streak at 180 knots. That's over 200 plus miles an hour. So looking at the next six to 10 days from the Climate Prediction Center, I really like looking at these updates because it gives us an idea what are the chances for above average temperatures or below average. So kind of put that in the back of your head. These are chances, not intensity. So in Bismarck, you have a 70% chance that you could have temperatures above average versus if you are in Santa Fe in New Mexico, you have a 33% chance of seeing temperatures that could be below average, more like 40% there. So long story short, the entire United States, the next 10 days could be above average. No Arctic air masses, no notable cool downs coming as what the GFS illustrates. The eight to 14 day forecast here really illustrates the same thing. Bismarck, Sioux Falls, LinkedIn, or Le uh, Lincoln, if you're in <laughs> Topeka, if you're in Oklahoma, Okay, going to be warmer than normal. Uh, there's a 60% chance of that, including for California. If you're in the Northeast, there's some sort of chances there that you could have above average temperatures. Now, as far as precipitation goes, it's going to be a wet one. We talked about the atmospheric river crisis going to be happening in Seattle and Portland, Austria, uh, Astoria there. I think that's how you say it, Astoria, Victoria, either way you put it going to be a wet one, very wet there, and drier than normal conditions potentially happening across Oklahoma City. If you're in Santa Fe, Phoenix, Tucson, if you're in um, Los Angeles, be a drier than normal one. The East Coast, they're going to be wetter than average potentially. There's a 40% chance of that occurring. Going out to now uh, 8 to 14 days, wetter than normal. I don't know what the Climate Prediction Center is thinking, but the models are not hinting at much for California. We'll see. We'll see. That's all I got to say. Um, but yeah, we're in the green, which is, well, apparently it's good, right? We need rain. Um, and then, of course, uh, down here, not so El Nino-like, really dry, potentially for Santa Fe, Oklahoma City, Topeka, and Denver, Colorado. Not much going on across the eastern half of the U.S. with a near uh, or equal chances, that is, for either above or below average precipitation. All right, well, that is going to sum it up for today's video. If you did enjoy it, please consider subscribing, hitting the like button, and sharing this video with your family and friends on social media. And I will be back with another YouTube video update tomorrow on the weather pattern because, you know, this is the changeable season. We got to get prepared for some big snowstorms, big mighty storms in the Northwest and other things. All right, but make sure you do subscribe for the latest. Hit the like button and share this with your family and friends on social media. And I'll catch you in the next one.